Alrighty folks, uh, Kathy Williams DeVries here bringing you a series of videos on the Schumann Fantasy Stücke, the three fantasy pieces for clarinet and piano opus 73. Um, the first video I made was for B flat clarinet. I'm also covering A clarinet. So this is the first movement for the A clarinet uh, version of the piece. Uh, personally, I prefer to play it on um, A clarinet. Um, I think the darker sound of the A clarinet, I think there's more uh, more emotion that can be um, more emotion that can be explored with a slightly uh, bigger uh, instrument. Although I think perhaps the second movement's probably just a little bit easier on a B flat, simply because of bars like. 30, um, where you're mucking around with a lot of uh, left hand C's and E flats and D flats and all that sort of stuff. Um, I mean, that said, um, I do prefer, um, yeah, I, I do prefer playing it. Um, and I think the last movement also runs a lot better um, on an A clarinet. Um, and I do recommend that when I first started, and I covered this on the other video, but I'll repeat myself, is that when I started learning these pieces at the conservatorium, my teacher said to go listen to Die Stilliber. Uh, and I went and listened to Die Stilliber, and I could hardly go past the first half a dozen songs because the text was depressing the hell out of me. Um, but I fell in love with Die Stilliber when I started working with singers um, at the Royal College of Music in London and I've loved them desperately ever since um, along with Art Song and Lieder. Um, so go listen to Die Stilliber, go listen to Winterreiter, I know that's by Schubert but um, there's also Shepherd on the Rock. Um, so uh, very very expressive um, on the A clarinet um, the reason I like the A clarinet is for bars like 22 where the forte piano goes from a throat tone to um, a B which I think gives us a very nice forte piano and uh, I find I get a nicer piano, forte piano on an A flat than I do on a G and in the section from bar 27 I just think that sits better on an A clarinet and the forte piano works better on a C than it does on a B. And uh, stuff like uh, the E flat to E flat at bar 53, I think, is easier on an A clarinet than a B flat. So, the thing about these fantasy pieces uh, is you've got to have a beautiful tone, beautiful legato, good control of the throat tones, and a lovely sense of phrasing. And I think the phrasing goes long, be, way beyond. Um, way beyond the slur lines. Um, for example, I would drive the first phrase right until bar six. Um, but let's let's play it through. Um, and you've got little bubbles like um, the bubble on the A flat in the second bar. And also. sits so much nicer on a clarinet but let's try this from the beginning seven with the bubble on the B flat I actually helped that along by putting a slight crescendo on the Ed D sort of give 
giving it a little bit of a platform to um, to rise up to the B flat there. Um, now in bar four, the A flat, I cover it with these two fingers. It just sounds. It just has a little bit more body. So coordinating between the C and the A flat. It's not as, it's not as easy as I'm making it look. Now, uh, so we've got past the first phrase, the first few phrases. In bar 11, uh, these notes tend to be a little bit sharp. So just watch that because you're with the piano there. And then it's um, echoed at, half, at double speed. Now that's the end of the phrase. You then need to pick up into a new phrase. And then a new phrase. Let's take it from the beginning and go up to there. there's a D flat there and there isn't. Uh, we're talking about bar, nine, uh, bar, bar 18 here. Uh, now, top E flat. This is too flat. What you need to do is raise that so that it's actually half holding. And also with the D to D like we did in the B flat part, just, just nudge that, slide that finger over. need to use the left hand C there. And so let's take it back a little bit. From the E flat to E flat, just half hold that. And take a little bit of time there. Now, cover the B flat so that you can get to the B, the, the C flat easier. See how I think that works better on an A clarinet. And then the next forte piano cover the A flat. Now you have a choice of E flats. I prefer to use. I prefer to keep it in the left hand. Now, at bar twenty, at the end of bar twenty six, um, you want to really smooth. Put more emphasis on that lower C. No forte piano on the next one. Now, in this particular uh, version of the piano part, it speeds up here. Now, what's suggested in this edition, and what my teacher suggested, and what I've always done, is left out the last quaver of bar 33. The piano is covering you. Anyway, take as much. 
much time as you want on that top C and also in bar 36 this particular piano part will wait for you. Let's take it back a little bit. P as compared to piano at the beginning so don't start the piece too softly because you'll leave yourself no room for the piano for the, for the for the pianissimo so here same thing but we're pianissimo just before the end edition they've got the decrescendo starting in the second half of bar 55 I don't agree I don't actually do a decrescendo until the second the third beat of bar 56 but that's just me now last bit make sure you use your cover fingering I do prefer using this F sharp um, especially because your forte. Okay, you can take time there and then cover the A flat. Oops, um, cover the G so that they, you can go to the E.
isn't it just absolutely gorgeous? Um, it's a really amazing, amazing, amazing uh, piece of music. Um, all three, and the romances too, um, are also exceptional. So uh, that's the first video um, of the fantasy pieces, the fantasy Stuka on a clarinet. Um, if you don't have an A clarinet and you want to have a B flat, make sure that you tune in um, to the B flat uh, videos. Um, and uh, at the end of these three videos on A clarinet, I'll give you a live performance of when I did it a few years ago. Uh, but that's enough for me on the first movement. Please join me uh, for second movement. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.